Welcome to the Next Up Recovery Podcast. We call this more than recovery because addiction is so much more than just getting clean from our addictions, our strongholds. It's, it's really finding our purpose in life and, and that's what we're here for each and every day. I like to say that we have three, three purposes here at the Next Step Recovery Podcast. The first purpose is to encourage people, to encourage those who are struggling in their addiction or, or just in life. It doesn't have to be an addiction, it could be anything. So we wanna encourage you. Number two, we wanna educate you. We wanna help you help other people. We wanna help you help others. And then finally, we want to expand our reach. We want to expand our impact. We want to expand our partners. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to a great show. Hey, welcome. Welcome to uh, the first, for us, this is the first podcast of the new year. Um, For you, when you see this podcast, it'll probably be February, it could be March. Um, But this is the first podcast for us recording of... 2024. So I will say welcome to January of 2024. Today, I have my good friend, Frank Tripp, Frankie Tripp. He's known by several names and uh, I am so looking forward today to talking to Frankie. I call him Frankie, Um, uh, but I'm looking forward to talking to Frankie today. I've known Frankie since probably 2020. We were just talking about that a minute ago before we started the podcast about how long I've known this guy. He's been around. So Frankie, Um, I'm going to start off by just having you introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, how old you are, where you from, and, uh, you know, and what's your favorite candy? (laughs) (laughs) My favorite candy is a sneaker bar. (laughs) But um, I'm 57 next month in February. Um, What else did you want to (laughs) know? Oh, where are you from, Frankie? Well, I'm from, I'm here from Macon, uh, Bellevue area. I've been here all my life. Um, next step, uh, a little over three and a half years. Um, like I stated before, it's all about my relationship with God. Amen. Good. Yeah, so Frankie is a graduate of Next Step Men's Home, Next Step Recovery Ministries, graduated um, in 2021, came to us, and he came to Next Step out of jail, walked from, walked from the Macon Bibb County Jail, in June, it was already hot. Right now outside here in Macon, it is about, it was 20 degrees this morning, 35 right now. It's pretty cold for middle Georgia right now, a little bit extreme cold for us. We're not used to this. But in June, it was hot. And, and I remember when you walked through that gate into Next Step, walked from the Bibb County Jail to us. And uh, that was June of 2020, graduated a year later, but didn't leave Next Step, stuck around and really uh, is an encouragement, has been an encouragement to the other men in the program. So I think we finally chased you off <laughs> <laughs> last summer, maybe, or it's wait, fall. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, uh, we say often there's a four-letter word that we don't like as Christians, and it's called W-A-I-T, wait. And uh, the longer we can wait on the Lord, the better things usually turn out for mm-hmm. us, don't they, Frank? Yes, so, they do. So Frankie, yeah, he graduated in 2021 mm-hmm. and then stuck around in a leadership role. 2022, he was still there. 2023, he's still there. And uh, obviously, when you're there that long, you're able to have a, a positive influence on the other men coming through the program. But at the same time, and Frankie, you said, how old are you? 57. 57 years yes. old. And I often say that a man who comes into our program who is... 47, 48, 49, 50, pushing into, you know, close to 57, a year is not enough. And the reason I say that is because by the time you get to be that age, uh, your brain has so many bad neuro pathways that you have developed, so many bad habits. And the old saying is you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, you can, just takes a little longer, right? Yes, so it does. To, we had to teach Frankie how to roll over again, how to sit, <laughs> how, right. how to do those things, because he right. was an old dog. In a godly way. That's right. In a godly way. You're an old dog when you came in, and yes. um, and really, I love what you said, Frankie. You said you came to Next Step for recovery, but what you realized you needed was what? A relationship with God. Yeah. And and, and when we have a relationship with the Lord, recovery, just ha- recovery will happen. It yes. will. Our, yes. Our, it, uh, getting clean will happen. When I put that relationship with God first, right? So you yes. came to the next step. So 
a little bit about your background, Frankie. Where, uh, um, when did you start using drugs? How old were you? I'd say I was probably around 13 years old. 13? Yes. Started with what? Marijuana. Okay. Yes. And then to what? Drinking and then hallucinogenics and then in my 20s, uh, chemical drugs. Okay. Yep. And that led you where? Where'd that lead you? Where'd you end up going to jail? When did you first start end up? Broke, homeless, and theft. Okay. Broke, homeless, theft. Most, you know, most, most... Drug users, most addicts are not going to jail. They're not going, they're not incarcerated for their drugs. They're incarcerated for what they do to get their drugs. Right. The theft, right? The domestic uh, problems that right. occur and all those different things. So you spent, and then how long did you spend, how many years have you spent total in prison, Frankie? A lot. A lot. Um, State, federal. I would say both. Um from the time I was 30 up until I was 51 or 52 years old. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. gotcha. In and out. Um, <clears throat> it's easier to say that the longest I stayed out, of course, was this past time, other than we'll talk about that. But um, <clears throat> uh, it started off at 17 months, one of the times. Prison. The no being out, being out. Okay, so yes. out of prison. So, so we're talking the period you would have maybe some time out of prison, but then right back. There was a small amount of time in between the times of incarceration. Wow. So, uh, it started at seventeen months, then it went down to like eight months, and then kept all spiraling down to three months, and the least amount of time was probably forty-five days. Yeah. Now. So you would get out of prison, get out of jail, and immediately go back to whatever you've been yes. doing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm walking out the door of prison, and as I'm walking out the door, I'm immediately looking for what I had been doing before. Yes. Right? <clears throat> well, in my mind, I knew what I was going to do when I got out every time. Right. I didn't know what I, was, I wasn't I was going to do, but I knew what I was going to do, and that was to get high. Yeah. And, uh, so before you even walking out the prison doors, you already know in your mind, oh, absolutely. this is where I'm going. Every single person does, I believe. Yeah. But um, the time, the last time that I had called a charge and decided to go to the next step, which I didn't want to go to the next step, but I had an influence that made me get, so, which was a blessing. So um, at that time, that time by itself, uh when I was, when I got locked up that time was a relief. Okay. Each time was a relief, but uh that time there and uh I prayed and surrendered. I surrendered everything that time and uh just got tired of ruining my life. Right. You know, um I wasn't running it, I was ruining it. So I let God take his course. Let him be the the guide, the leader. Yeah, you think, Frankie, for most men, women who are trying to get over their addiction, mm-hmm. right? There, at first, there has to be a surrender, doesn't there? Right. There right. has to Absolutely. be a surrender. It's got to be. It's totally. got to be more than I want to get clean. Yes. Because I can say I want to do something, but if I'm not ready to surrender completely right. all of it to the Lord, it's not going to happen. And so many men and so many women who are looking to get clean. Wow, they're sick and tired of what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. At the same time, they're not quite ready to surrender it all yet, are they? That that they, a person doesn't have a clue what they need or what they don't need. Yeah. But the statement that has been said in many different places, like NA or AA, you got to realize that you have a problem first. Yeah. And I'd have to say. Once you start, you already know that you have a problem. So then comes the thought, I want to change. And then how do I change? Oh, Lord. Uh, Yeah. And I mean, I'm at, I think there's a lot of confusion going on in a person's mind because it's so, as we say, foggy. And uh, they definitely got to want to change. Okay. I mean, I said for many years I could stop anytime I want, but I couldn't. 
had no clue, no keys, no kind of guidance whatsoever until I started developing a relationship with God. Okay. And listening. Right. There you go. You know, I say the second thing is, so there's got to be a surrender, right? There's got to be a surrender. Right. And then the, the second thing is, I've got to be willing to listen to somebody else besides, mm-hmm. because what I find mm-hmm. with the, most people in recovery is they're not ready to listen. That's right. To somebody else. That is right. And if you're not ready, we have so many guys come into our program who walk in the door. This just happened last week. Who walk in the door the first day and they say, man, I'm ready to do this. I'm going to complete this program. I'm going to do this. And literally within a day, they're gone Mm -hmm. because they realize they have to listen to somebody. Mm -hmm. They have to, they have to admit that they're wrong about some things. Right. And when they, and there's a pride thing going on there. So I want to get- Constructive criticism. Yeah. Constructive. Yes. We, we do a class at Next Step called How to Take Criticism from Anybody. Mm. How, to t- how to take criticism from even people you don't like, even even if it's bad criticism. That's right. Right? Even if somebody speaks to you in a way that disrespects you, you can still take that and and say, okay, even though I don't like what they're saying, I don't like the way they said it, I can still learn something That's right. from it. Well, I look at it like yeah. it's the truth. And I know it. Yeah. Even if I don't want to believe it, you know, um, and take it, analyze it, do whatever a person does with it, but think about it. And it's a thought process. And um, it's funny I say process. I've been taught for the last three years as a process to success. Yeah. <clears throat> There's and, no straight uh, line to it. No. I'm not successful. But I have been successful at things that I wanted to accomplish. So um, it's a lifelong th- lifelong deal. Yeah. You know, um, I didn't just decide to quit doing drugs and bam, I quit doing drugs. Don't want them anymore. Right. No, it was a process that I had to go through. Um, uh, a lot of pain, some tears, and a lot of waiting. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of hearing things that you didn't want to hear. Ooh, a whole lot. Yeah. And and you even tell me today, I still come back to those things that I that somebody said to me in counseling or mm-hmm. in a situation yes. where they said, Frankie, that's not the way you should be doing things. Or Frankie, that's not mm-hmm. the way it, it, you're going to succeed. Or Frankie, that's not what's going to get you to the next place you need to be. Even though it might be what you want to do. It's not going to be the best thing for you, and we all have to receive that. I have to receive that. Yes. You have to. Yes. You have to receive that. So, so let's fast forward a little bit, Frankie. So you come to Next Step. You you go through the program at Next Step. The first six months of the program, uh, you don't get to go to work for right. yourself, right? The first six months, you're in class, you're in counseling, you're in small groups, you're in church, um, and you work for Next Step, right? Right. And That's right. that means we sell firewood. We we sell boiled peanuts. We go out and do nasty jobs. We uh, clean out houses. All and types, cut trees. Cut everything. trees down. We, <laughs> I don't know if you remember a couple of Januarys ago, we had you up in a bucket truck. <laughs> way, way up. up. Way up high. And I thought, Fred, <laughs> he's, he's not real good with heights <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Not with those kind. <laughs> yeah. and uh, But uh, he volunteered to do it and, and uh, did a great, but it was, I, that was cold that day. I remember Woo. that. So. But uh, so the first six months, you're 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 you don't get to work for you, um, but there's a lot of classroom time. Yes, right. And then the second six months, you can go to work, right, for you. Um, and then there's still a lot of classroom time. Well, for some, it took me a little bit longer to go to work. <laughs> yes. How long did it did it take you a while to go? Ten to work months before Chris let you go to work. That's right. <laughs> I didn't recall that, but that's okay. Yeah. So, so well deserved, well deserved, yeah, yeah. and yeah. very much appreciated and humbling, yes, very and humbling, yes. Well, anyway, so Frankie graduates from the program, sticks around in a leadership role at Next Step, really helping with the guys and um, learning. I think you learn when you go from being a student to now having to deal with twenty five or thirty guys on a daily basis. It, it it's it's probably. Worse than being a student. At, yes. At next time. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because now you're having to deal with these right. guys. You're having to, and, 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 you know, when you have new guys in the program, 
boy, they're some of those guys are not ready to to listen. No, no, they're not receptive. Yeah. So you graduate now. You've you've not only graduated, but you stuck around for another two 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 and a half years to help out, stayed in our transition housing, and then recently you have moved out on your own. Yes. And it hasn't been long since you've been out on your own, right? Right. Well, let me back up before I go here. So what are the things you're doing right now? No longer, so we're not making you do anything, right? That's right. Next step is not making you do anything. Right. 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 We're not making you. So what are the things you're doing right now, Frankie, that are helping you be successful? <clears throat> well, uh, to begin with, um, I own my own business, and that's uh, that helps a lot. But what I do now is pray without ceasing. I stay with my devotions uh, morning and evening. Uh, I attend church. Um, not religiously, but what a growing Christian would do. Yeah. You know, uh, maintain relationship with my church family, with Next Step, and just do my studies. And the most important is is my relationship with God. Yeah. So, you, so you're maintaining um, your relationship with the Lord. Yes. Maintaining my relationship with good people. Yes. Right, and yes. I'm putting myself in good places. Yes, and I'm being productive at work. Yes, right. It's a pretty simple formula. It really, it really is. Yes, I mean, it is hard to do sometimes, but it's a you know maintain my relationship with the Lord, maintain mm-hmm. my relationship with good people, mm-hmm. be accountable. Right, right. Accountability, yeah. absolutely. Be productive. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, those are the things that you're essentially doing in order to maintain. Your sobriety. Yes. Stay clean. Yes. And, and not just that, it, it applies to all of us. You don't have to be a drug addict. Those That's are right. things we should all be that doing. That is absolutely correct. To find what what Joshua would call uh, great success. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. So you, you're you doing all these things, right? And then back in December, something happens. What, oh, yeah. what happened to you in, in December? Well, let's just say the past will come back and haunt you. Okay. And... Uh, it's hard to keep a, a a relationship with a lawyer, or especially when it's the public defender's office and whatnot. Right. Um, <clears throat> let's just say that the problem that that existed that ended me up at Next Step Ministries um, and to this beautiful life that I live now was something of the past that was supposed to be taken care of and uh it wasn't but it was definitely a living learning experience to have to go back through a part of life that i truly did not ever want to go back to right so you're you're pulled over one night coming back from a funeral yes and arrested yes because there was an outstanding warrant for your arrest because yes. you missed a court date that you didn't know you had right right because the charges were supposed to have been dropped right so nobody communicated to you that there was a a, a warrant for your arrest so there was yes. a, a communication failure of multiple and during the holidays and it's during the holidays and yeah when so there's no court right and and everybody's out so Frankie ends up in jail yes for um for Christmas Yes. Merry Christmas. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, and uh, and during that time, I, I told Frankie, I said, you know, maybe God allowed that to happen as a good reminder as to Frankie, you don't want to go back here. Absolutely not. That's where you don't want to go back to. And we were able to affect it through the through through uh, some emails and through some uh, begging of some judges and yeah. and uh, and the district attorney to to help get Frank Tripp out of. <laughs> Out of jail, I'm getting phone calls from uh, people who work in the jail going, why is Frank Tripp back at jail? You know, and I'm like, oh, it's a mess, right? You know, so, but, you know, the reports I got of you back there were, were good, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you, you shared a few things with me, your frustrations, and uh, yes. and, uh, and uh, I said, well, you know, maybe jail hasn't changed, but, but Frank Tripp has, has mm-hmm. changed. and I believe so. So, yeah, so our past sometimes can jump up to, to bite us, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And those consequences that we thought had, we had put behind us leap up and they, and they grab us again. I often tell the guys at Next Step, 
once you get in the system, the system doesn't want to let you go. That is so very true. Right. So don't don't get caught up in the system. Don't blame the system for being unfair. Yes. The system is unfair. That's life. Yes. Don't get caught up in it. If if you don't want to experience the unfairness and the brutality of the court system, of the law enforcement system, don't put yourself in it. There you go. There you go. Right. Yes. Don't, don't, again, and another thing I like is, is, you know, let's stop giving away our freedom. True. Let's stop giving away our, our relationships. Let's stop giving away our finances. Let's stop giving away our, 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 our relationships. I just said, right. let's stop giving away our purpose. Yes. Let's stop giving all those things away to the government. Let's right. stop doing that because that's what we do. When we continue to engage in the lifestyle is we're giving all of those things away. Right. And let's stop because we God wants us to have those things. He wants Frank Tripp to have that is those right. things. Yes. And so I think it was a great reminder for you and Most for me, definitely. you know, because I felt kind of helpless for a while and trying to figure out who, you know, and 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 you, and then you called me that day and I was like, okay, this is what we can do. Right. right? You called me from jail and and I had uh, a couple of lieutenants call me from jail and I had Brandy call me from jail right. and everybody's, and it, it, it must be nice, Frankie, to have people in jail who love you. Yes. They knew you. <laughs> and you had people, you had people outside of jail. Frankie had developed a, a support system of people outside of that realm yes that man they you could tell there's people who care about you and yes. concerned about you absolutely and were willing to step in to do anything they could for this man the multitudes because he had developed a support system and not it was a support system of good solid people yes not perfect people what did we no, they're not perfect i'm not perfect <laughs> but you had developed that system and they were willing to do anything for you yes. to help you. Yes. And you probably hadn't had those types of relationships before. No. Those relationships you had before were, what can we get? How can we get it? Where can we get it? Well, he's gone now. We yeah. Oh, Frank Tripp's in jail? Well, who's next? There you go. Right. Absolutely. But instead of a support system. So, man, what a great lesson that was for me, especially for you. I don't wish that on anybody. I don't wish anybody to spend. I was in Bibb County Jail twice in the last two weeks, and I'm just going in there as a visitor, and mm -hmm. I do not like it in there. No, it's terrible. No, it's an awful environment. Yes, it is. You know, no offense to to the to the Bibb County Sheriff. That's not what this is. Right, I'm, I'm just, right. In, it's just yeah. it's jail. Yes, and it is horrible. Packed full of. It's horrible. Yeah, and it's not a it's not a uh, it's not an experience that that you want, and so. But, but I, I appreciate your attitude because I took you to lunch right after you got out. We right. went to lunch, right? Me, you, Kevin Mason yes. sat down, and and I appreciated Frankie's attitude of I'm going to take something from this. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to apply it. It's going to be part of who I am. I'm not bitter. I'm not angry. People make mistakes, right? Lawyers make mistakes. Judges yes. make mistakes, yes. and, and we make mistakes. And and uh, at the end of the day, we have to take it, learn from it, and understand we don't want to move on. That's right, and move on. And you're moving on. So I'll end with this because you called me yesterday, right? And you said this. You said, Todd, I need your advice. I'm really struggling right now with my what? Would you tell me? ADD. My ADD. Right. Adult ADD is 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 real. Yes. Most of it, we see it in children, but adult ADD is very real. And I asked Frankie a couple of questions. I said, first of all, Frankie, I said, you just, you haven't been out of jail that long. Mm -hmm. And you shared with me that jail kind of triggered your PTSD, mm -hmm. right? So yes. that's going to contribute to what you're dealing with. A lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my next question to you was, how are you sleeping? What was your answer? Terrible. Not well. Not well at all. The stress is still there. Yes. Right. The stress of what you've been through, the PTSD. And the second thing I asked you is, how are you feeling physically? And you told me that your back hurts, mm. which contributes to to some of that as well. Yes. And the, and the third thing is, is because you were in jail and you have your own business, all of a sudden you're behind. And everything is a priority now. For mm -hmm. the person with ADD, everything can't be a priority. That's right. Right. That's right. And so it's going to. You're trying to do everything and you end up doing nothing. Right. Sure. And I'm not saying you're doing nothing, a but very you very small amount of a comp 
right. of, 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 of yeah. accomplish, accomplishments. Because everything is top priority. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, and I said, A, you gotta get some you got to get some sleep. Mm-hmm. Right. B, you gotta see the doctor about your back. Right. Right. And, and C prioritize things. You've yeah. got to make a list and everything can't be number one. That's right. Everything can't be number <laughs> I prioritize everything. Everything's number one. Everything you have got to do. Everything. Right. Right. So, and you got to, and, and pe- you know what? People have to just, under, they might get upset with you. They might get uh, a little ill, but yeah, sooner or later. Right. Because you have to take, if you don't take care of Frankie, then Frankie can't take care of business. That is right. Yeah. So, yes. man, uh, Frankie, what else? What? What's one thing, if you could say one thing to the folks out there who might have a loved one struggling with addiction or in and out of jail, yeah. what would you say to their parents, their their loved ones, their spouses? What, 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 what word of encouragement would you give to them? Well, for many years, I do believe that I had gotten a lot of prayers for my life to change. Um, Other people praying for you? Yes, I would say, you know, just keep on praying for the loved one. Um, don't in, don't enable the person, male or female. It doesn't matter. Um, tough love can be really hard, but it's not good in some cases. Yeah. Um, a lot goes along with being an addict. You know, it's a lot of mental, psychological aspects to it. Yeah. But um, just uh, don't throw them away. Just love them. Pray for them. And just um, try to do, make some good decisions. Yeah. You know, uh, everyone out there don't have a Todd to talk to, or much less anyone at all that's got any sense. Um, and we'll just pray for them. Amen. Good. Well, that is Frank Tripp, Frankie Tripp, my good friend Frankie. And man, it's been a pleasure to be able to talk to you today. And if you're out there and you're struggling or you have a loved one who's struggling, if you have some questions, like I say, each time we do this podcast, do not hesitate to contact us. You can can reach us through our our website. Contact information is there at www.nextstepmin.org. And we'd love to hear from you. And it's a cold January day, so I hope that you'll stay warm today. Have a wonderful 2024.